All right, I think we're rolling. Hi, my name is Tyler, and this is my career project. So to start off our project, we had to think of different career pathways. And it took me a while to decide, but I decided upon four, four of them being a business owner, a career in welding, an educator, and a career in agriculture. And after a lengthy consideration, I chose the agriculture pathway just because there's a lot more I can learn in this area about it. And there's a broad, a broad area because when you think ag, you think farmer right away. But there's also the ag business spectrum, which is kind of the business aspect of it, the ones who kind of set the prices for corn, the ones who sell different products, that type of thing. Then there's the ag politics side as well, which are kind of the ones that kind of keep everything in order and keep uh, their politicians. What do you want? And for my SWOT analysis, for strength, oh, my face is in the way. Let's see if I can, oh, sweet, okay. So for my SWOT analysis and strength, as of right now, I think I'm very able to find a job in agriculture. Very trustworthy, and if I say something, I'll do it. As of right now, I'm a certified welder, and I have completed my OSHA 10. And the OSHA 10 is kind of a general safety certification, which means, hey, I know how to climb a ladder and put on a hard hat, which you would think is simple, but you still have to put the pen to paper on things like that. And it's sort of an icing on the cake to anything I would do, and it gives me a head start over the ones who don't have their OSHA 10. And I have a lot of experience working in commercial farming, seeing as I've been a farmhand working on a farm throughout high school. So I have an understanding of all the odd jobs that occur as I go as well. For the weakness aspect, the weakness side, I know I'm very inexperienced in the field of business. I've taken classes to learn more, but I know how different a classroom teaching is from the real world. So I would have to really experience the business side other than just farm management. But I'm very motivated and keep pushing and continue learning every day to further enhance my knowledge of agriculture and business and hopefully combine them well. Oh, face in the way again. All right. For opportunities, there are so many openings in this field since agriculture is ever-changing. Changes. Whoops, don't look at that. Is ever-changing. There's new jobs opening up every day, but this also means my potential salary range fluctuates. And this is, it's kind of hard to list your opportunities because within a year time, one thing that's very wealthy in agriculture the next year, totally unheard of. So it was kind of hard to balance and, and fluctuate. And it's, it's ever changing. It's, it's difficult to get into. And for threats, there's a lot of threats that seem, that don't, that don't come up right away. My biggest threat is finding a job out of college. Since a degree in agribusiness is so vast, I may be offered a job I know nothing about, or I cannot be offered a job at all. Though nonetheless, I'm going to still complete my degree and see where it takes me, fully committed. Because as soon as I graduate, there may be a job about water conservation. And, all right, let's learn about that on the job, that type of thing. But I don't think of it as a threat as much, even just because if you want me to do a job, help me learn about it, and then let's get it done. Okay, for my agriculture interviews, I have the dates on my phone here. I had them ready. I was prepared. The first person I interviewed is Clifford Mayo, and that's, that's my grandpa. He's a retired farmer and recently just got out of pol politics as a county commissioner. And I interviewed him at the First United Methodist Church about 5.30 on April 20th because that was, it was a Wednesday night and every Wednesday we have our family meal that the church puts on, whatever type thing. And I had these questions ready and I figured, hey, help me out. And he answered all of my questions to the best of his ability. And like how, how I talked about how, with, how the opportunities fluctuate, he got out of the farm business in like 2008 which is almost 10 years ago. So his answers were a little dated, but nonetheless, they're still appreciated. And his comments were funny and, and all that else, but he, the main thing he stressed is getting my degree in ag business because with that, though everything else changes all the time, that doesn't, and that's what's really going to help me out. The next person I interviewed was Steve Mayo on April 21st, and Steve is actually my uncle. And as of right now, he is a cattle supplement salesman. 
and which means he works for the, a company called Lumix, develop, delivering cattle supplement. And cattle supplement is think, think pre-workout, think regular supplement. It's that type of thing. It gives the necessary vitamins and new proteins and and just different amounts of natural ingredients to kind of give those cattle a pat on the back and the, the chemicals, not chemicals, that's not the word I wanted, the ingredients they need to prosper. And he told, he told me a lot about getting his degree. He served on the livestock team at K-State, so he's all about that. And he told me it's very important to get my degree and see where it takes him because he's had several jobs. He was a farmer at a time and got out of the business and I wish I could explain why, but I'm not old enough to understand yet. And you know, I'm okay with that. But anyway, now he's doing this, and he's, if you would have told him when he got out of college, he'd be driving a semi in his 60s delivering cattle supplement, he wouldn't have believed you. But that just shows how much the, the agricultural field fluctuates. And on April 30th, I think it's like 315-ish maybe, I interviewed my dad, and my dad is David Cloud, obviously. He's quality assurance in the manufacturing of agricultural tanks. And he works at Worthington Industries, and it's a local business in town. And right now he's actually in Canada. So I called him over the phone, which was kind of odd. But I asked him all my questions and everything, and he he kind of gave me the, the concept of not just the, the manufacturing aspect, but the ad construction in it too, which is really cool. And there's, there's so much to do within that that I can do with just a simple ag business degree. And that there's a, a bunch of platforms open, and if I could find some type of house here, maybe pass out on my parents' couch, I could get a job immediately here. Which I don't know I want to do yet, but anyway. And on April 30th, too, I, I called my boss, Elaine, because I was actually out of town as well. So my dad was in Canada, I was in Manhattan. So I called my boss, Elaine, who was a full-time commercial farmer. And being a commercial farmer means that you sell every product you grow, so to speak. So, for instance, they grow dent corn. And dent corn is its not something for human consumption. So if you try and take a bite out of that, you'll break all your teeth. It's more used for, uh, for cattle and livestock. And it's, more, it's a hardier corn. And it's, I think it's also really getting used as, as a plastic, as a corn plastic, as that's changing. So that's cool. And she she told me that she got her degree, and she came back and is farming now. But she couldn't stress to me enough she about how important it is to get your degree in whatever you want it to be. And uh, she she got all of her both of her kids through college, which is an awesome deal. If you're a farmer and you can do that, you're amazing. And we went we went on and on, and she was telling me story after story, and and it all came down to the moral of how important it is to get that degree from college. All right, I'm running out of breath here. Anyway, <laughs> I, don't, I don't talk this much all the time. My uh, shadowing experience was different. I immediately, when I got back from Manhattan, I was up there for state FFA and everything was snowed in back home, so we had to stay a little longer. But when I finally got home, my boss decided that I need to come to work anyway and help him out, which is all right. So I came home and I, I called him and I said, well, I have this project and do you mind if I just followed you around all day? And he was all for it. It wasn't a big deal. And this man is Mark Ramsey. And Mark is the main head at Ramsey Brothers Farm, the farm I work on. And I had already interviewed his wife, Elaine. But I spent a day with him instead to see what he does that she or myself does not. And Mark kind of handles the mechanical aspect of things. He repairs sprinkler motors and fertilizer pumps and taught me how to in the process. And the way I like his teaching is he has a different story for every situation. And so whenever we would have a problem, he's, oh, I remember back in 79 when I had to, that type of thing, which is always fun if you're stuck outside in the cold. You might as well have a good story to keep you going. And he would tell me story after story, and we spent the whole day talking about Ag reports, what's on station, 10.30 a.m., and just talking about his life and things like that. And He himself did not go to college because somebody had to stay home and farm. And he couldn't stress enough how important he thinks a quality education is, even if it's just a high school degree. But he, he told me that it's probably better if I got my college degree 
And if it's if it's a, a suggestion from him, I'm, it's a good thing I'm listening to it. So that kind of concludes that. And this next part is kind of a mission because I I need to see if the audio works on this thing, but I I don't think it will. So I'm gonna exit out of here. Well, before I get going too quick, the person that's my personal interview is my dad again because we talked about this and he said he would happily do it for me and help me out. And um, but with the timing and everything, he's kind of in Canada right now, and he doesn't really know how to how to iPhone well. But bless his heart, he took a video of himself at a very, very nice looking angle. Let's see if I can pull that up. There he is, at a very good angle, and he's sitting on a bus. And he he was very excited to tell me he figured out how to record himself. And I, I this is the first time I'm watching this too, so this will be fun for all of us. So, what does agriculture mean to me and my work? We build a lot of agricultural tanks, as in fiberglass tanks, and also steel tanks for farms for fuel. This is one of our mazes that we do today. I'm up in the country of British Columbia, Canada, looking at how other people build their tanks. They also do a lot of agricultural tanks. Agriculture to me is a big business. Being growing up on a farm when I was younger, raising cattle, dairy cattle. So I know the importance of agriculture. And in the job I have now as a quality control inspector, I want to make sure that the customers get a quality product when it goes to the farms or their businesses. Okay. So that went well. So I'm going to pull this back up just so we have a backdrop. But there we go. But that was kind of his take on it. And like I said, bless his heart, he didn't really quite know what he was doing. But he was trying his best and doing all he could for me. And I appreciate that. But I think that concludes my talk. My talk. My, my speech. My video. Whatever it is, it's concluded. So I think now I'm going to call my dad and teach him how to take better selfies or something. Thank you.